everybody and welcome back to season three of Cryptid Tales. My name is Amber Beckrude and this is the kickoff of what is going to be a very incredibly fun season. I absolutely promise that. Um, so yeah, I figured since with everything going on and quarantine and whatnot, it has been brought to my attention that, well, UFOs have become a really big thing. A lot of people, because they have nothing better to do, are looking at the skies. And I thought, why not talk about UFOs this season? We've kind of touched on it a little bit beforehand, but not really. And if you guys know anything about Spaced Out Radio, we definitely love our UFOs and alien stories here on this channel. So, to kick it all off, I thought maybe, just maybe, I would start off with the Battle of Los Angeles. Now there may be some of you viewers out there who lived through this or viewers who have heard of it. Um, it's definitely not something that has been kept quiet per se, but it is definitely something that is very interesting and good to look into. So. For those of you who don't know and who need a little bit more of the background, shortly after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, there was a strange incident in Los Angeles in the early hours of the morning of February 25th, 1942. Now, what that was was an unidentified flying aircraft that was spotted in the skies above Los Angeles. Pending another attack, military forces fired over 1,400 anti-aircraft shells into the sky in order to bring it down, but apparently hit nothing. So this is strange incident number one. First, there was an aircraft that nobody could identify, thought it was Japanese, so they shot at it. Nothing happened. Then, photographs surfaced, of course, the next morning in newspapers, and it showed a flying saucer-like object hanging in the sky, and it was caught in one of the military searchlights. Now, this was also strange event number two. This threw everybody into a frenzy. UFOs were already a big thing. They were already being researched into quite a bit. And honestly, it could be. Of course, the military being the military, they just chalked it all up to being a weather balloon and moved along with their day. Most people who research UFOs didn't actually agree with that fact whatsoever. So people started looking into it. They started trying to deep dive into what this aircraft specifically was. Of course, there have been many, many, many theories over the years, but there are people out there who swear up and down that this was absolutely nothing and the people who think that it was a UFO are absolutely crazy. It's hard to say. I mean, if you've seen the footage, if you have seen the pictures, if you have seen anything that has to do with the Battle of Los Angeles, it's hard. I mean, back then they didn't really have the technology to edit a photo. Yeah, you could fake a photo, but that would require actually putting a flying saucer in the sky at that time, pointing a spotlight at it. And there weren't the mechanics to do that back then. I mean, people have faked a lot of things for a lot less. We didn't have the ability to really doctor photos and put people in places or objects in places they shouldn't be. So why would these photos be fake? That's question number one. Question number two is what would be the purpose. We all know that the US military has a really long history of covering up UFO sightings and UFOs in general, alien abductions, etc. So why just chalk this one up to being a weather balloon? Weather balloons are not saucer-like, at least not the ones that I've seen. And 
it makes it a little strange to me that they were so quick to jump on the gun of this is a weather balloon, nothing else, move on with your day. Little fishy to me, not gonna lie. So let's just kind of backtrack and go deeper into kind of what happened that day and that night. So the US Naval Intelligence issued a warning that there was going to be an attack on California within the next 10 hours. That evening, in the vicinity of the defense plants, an alert was called at 7.18 p.m and wasn't lifted until 10 23 p.m. So for a period of about three hours, there was a complete alert called. Then in the early morning of the 25th, the air raid sirens decided they were going to go off again. They sounded at 2.25 a.m. So from 10.30 the night before to two in the morning, the night, like the morning after, nothing. And then all of a sudden the air raid sirens sound all over LA County. This is already weird. Then a total out blackout was ordered and thousands of air raid wardens were summoned to their position. By 3.16 AM, 37th Coastal Artillery Brigade started shooting 50 caliber machine guns and anti-aircraft shells at an object in the sky. 1,400 shots fired, nothing hit. Pilots were also alerted from one of the aircrafts, but they were told to remain grounded in to basically stand down. So why alert another aircraft? Fire off all of these rounds if it was just a weather balloon. Now, let me also state, these rounds were fired from 3.13 a.m. until 4 until 4.14 a.m. So for one whole hour, they shot the sky at absolutely nothing, according to them. The lifted and all clear was not brought out until seven in the morning. So why at seven o'clock the night before, 12 hours earlier, they put out an alert, she cut it off three hours in and then 10, 11, 12, one, four hours later, they bring up another air raid alert and then start shooting. But it all seems a little fishy to me. Now, after all of those reports, the Japanese government swore up and down, backwards and forwards, that they had no planned flights during the war over the United States. So, why were they saying they were shooting at a Japanese aircraft? No aircraft was found, no aircraft was seen, but pictures of a flying saucer actually came out. There is one theory, and it's one theory that a lot of people have kind of talked about, I guess, um, and maybe taken into a little more consideration. Now that theory is that back in 2011, there was a movie called The Battle of Los Angeles. It was a sci-fi movie, it talked about alien abductions and the alien raids on, you guessed it, Los Angeles, and that they were using these fake and doctored photos to promote the movie. Now, of course, everybody just went off. Everybody assumed that these photos were real, that they had happened, that they were from that period of time, but, there's not really a correlation. Yes, there was a whole movie about the Battle of Los Angeles, and yes, they did have fake news articles that they produced for the movie and all of those things, but this actual event did take place. It was also called the Great Los Angeles Air Raid, so could people just be getting it mixed up? As far as everybody is concerned, these photos are completely fake. Every single one of them. But what I have a question for is the people out there who do remember, or maybe you have a family member still alive who remembers the Battle of Los Angeles. Do you remember, do they remember what happened? What was out in the news at that time? What actually came about? Because if so, I wanna know down below. I wanna know if you actually accepted the theory that this was just a air balloon, or if, it actually was something a lot more. So that is my question to all of you lovely viewers out there in YouTube land. 
And yeah. What do you think actually happened during the Battle of Los Angeles? Were the photos just doctored and made up to promote a movie in 2011 that we all took as historical fact? Or did it actually happen to some small degree and the government's just trying to cover it up all over again? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And of course, tune in every Saturday for the next 13 weeks. That's right, 13 episodes of season three. And stay tuned because we've got a lot more UFO goodness to come. Of course, let me know your UFO stories down below. I absolutely love reading your comments. And if you have any questions for me, hit me up down below in the comment section. Head over to my social media as well. Don't forget to follow Spaced Out Radio. And a huge shout out to Ron Bumblefoot Thal for all of our music here on the Spaced Out Radio channel as well. Don't forget that you can now sign up for the SOR Vault, which gives you exclusive access to forums, chats, and a lot of other cool things. I'm so excited to be back for season three of Cryptid Tales, and I can't wait to talk more about UFOs with all of you. Have a good one, guys.